I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Terry Culver, the CEO of Digital Finance Group and ETC Labs. Terry, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's great to see you here. My pleasure. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Let's kick it off with a little bit of background um, on how the Digital Finance Group and ETC Labs came to be and what are the goals right now in the digital finance and cryptocurrency industry? Sure. So uh, Digital Finance Group started back in 2015, um, really as a way to learn about this emerging asset class and emerging technology. Uh, we established a trading fund as well as a private equity fund where we've invested in a number of blockchain companies. Um, and since then, we decided to make a significant commitment to public blockchain. We really think that that is where the technology will create the most value for people. Uh, and we decided to uh, make that commitment to Ethereum Classic, which is one of the world's major public blockchains uh, and one where we felt like we could make a significant difference. That's great. And Ethereum Classic Labs is doing a lot for the Ethereum Classic community. The Ethereum community is, is so huge and they're, they're closely related, but there's definitely a lot of room for growth in Ethereum Classic. And your team has done a great job so far. I know I recently spoke with James Wo, the chairman, about the investments and your team has made at least 20 investments, if, if I'm not uh, wrong, last year in uh, blockchain startups. Can you talk about those investments and what your team looks for to help grow that ecosystem? Uh, sure, and thank you for the, the kind words. We've actually made over 40 investments, uh, as well as a new grants program uh, and a new program funding very forward-looking innovative research in addressing some of the fundamental problems in blockchain. Uh, what we look for with our investments is uh, early-stage projects with uh, talented developers and entrepreneurs who are really trying to increase the adoption of this technology. To our mind, uh, a lot of the technology is already functional. It has a long way to go, of course, but the key factor at the moment is uh, making it real for people, seeing how it can improve people's lives. And that will come from the apps, projects, use cases that uh, fulfill a very specific, either economic or social need. So when we look at the hundreds of applications that we get, that's really the foremost question in our mind. That's great. And to elaborate a little bit, are you focused on projects that are inside that help the cryptocurrency ecosystem? Um, you know, for example, protocol layer or wallet infrastructure, things like that, and also use cases of different industries around the world, or is it a mixture of two? We, we focus on both. Um, you know, because you need both. The, the technology is still very nascent, so you have a lot of infrastructure that uh, still needs to be built. And at the same time, uh, you need adoption. Um, so we, we look for both. Mm -hmm. That's great. And your team at Ethereum Classic Labs recently released the Ethereum virtual machine, low level virtual machine, uh, which is a handful to say. Uh, but this helps developers with different programming languages, not just Solidity, which is what Ethereum's primarily using. Um, is this a game changer for developing applications on Ethereum Classic? And how does this affect the development moving forward? Uh, we think it's a game changer and it's a development we're actually particularly excited about. It, uh, it takes the virtual machine, which you know I have to say is a remarkable innovation and it lets developers write smart contracts in languages other than Solidity. Solidity is a terrific language, it's very secure, but not a lot of developers use it. So we're looking for a way to maintain that level of security, but make the technology accessible to developers other than those who know Solidity and the lower mm -hmm. level virtual machine allows us to do that. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, Ethereum developers all have to learn Solidity. Has it been a huge burden for regular developers who know the common programming languages to bring in Solidity as well and to just to develop on the blockchain? I think it's a challenge for some, uh, it, but what you find is that the developers who are really committed to blockchain will learn Solidity. 
uh, but it becomes self-selecting. So, you know, you don't get the developers who might use blockchain but don't want to commit their careers to it. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do with the lower level virtual machine is extend the net so that we can include developers who are interested in blockchain but not necessarily fully committed to it. Mm -hmm. That's great. And does that also include libraries and SDK kits that sort of make it easier to not start from scratch? Um, or is it all from the ground up? Uh, so with the libraries and SDKs, that would really fall to our tooling team. Um, you know, so we have a tooling team that's developed an open RPC specification that helps developers with uh, developing blockchain code in a format that they would use for almost any other type of commonly used development. Uh, so while we don't have an SDK yet for the lower level virtual machine, we expect to have one but we are creating other tools that make blockchain development accessible at several different layers. Mm -hmm. That's great. And <clears throat> your team is doing a great job helping the developer ecosystem. Um, can you give a scope on you know, what the size of it is and if it's growing and is this going to increase the adoption from developers and what you expect to the size of the community that you expect? Uh, yeah, I think one of our biggest challenges is increasing the number of developers working on Ethereum Classic. Uh, you know, the developers really are the heart of the matter. And so what we're doing is trying to reach out to those communities and uh, encourage them to build on, a, on Ethereum Classic. Mm -hmm. Right now, our developer yeah. team is about uh, 14 uh, developers. And then we have a number of consultants and contractors we work with. But that's the, the core team as we know it. Uh, and we expect that to grow to about 20 over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. That's great. And are there incentives? Uh, I guess, you know, in the introduction of this lower level machine is an incentive, um, but are there many incentives for uh, Ethereum Classic developers? Uh, I think, you know, we're mission driven. So uh, if you're committed to developing a new technology that can have transformational impact on people's lives, uh, blockchain and, and Ethereum and Ethereum Caustic in particular mm -hmm. are exactly that. Uh, one of the advantages to Ethereum Classic, I think, is that, you know, there's a lot to build. Um, you know, it has, I think, historically been underdeveloped compared to Ethereum. And I think uh, we're very open minded. So, you know, we're looking for developer creativity, developer independence. Uh, you know, there's a lot of open space for developers in which to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. And now that you've released this lower level machine, you know, what are some of the next uh, roadmap targets for on the development for Ethereum Classic? Uh, one is we want to uh, continue building on top of the LLVM. So uh, we want to target specific use cases for the LLVM and specific languages for those use cases. So, for example, uh, we're looking at specific languages that would help extend the use of DeFi. Um, we're looking at trying to increase adoption. So the Ethereum Geth developers have agreed to take a look at the LLVM and possibly adopt that into Ethereum, which would be a really nice contribution. Uh, on the protocol side, we're looking at some innovations that include account versioning. So it allows you to uh, change the nature of smart contracts without breaking previously written contracts. Uh, and of course, we're always looking to extend the tooling that we're building. So better wallets, more secure custody, uh, mm -hmm. easier interfaces, and uh, interoperability between different chains. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And you touched on DeFi there. Uh, DeFi has been huge with the Ethereum community uh, being able to stake coins and, and earn interest as well. Is that something that Ethereum Classic Labs has focused on and DFG um, on the investment side or growing that ecosystem? Uh, we're definitely interested in it, in particular because you know a lot of the Ethereum Classic community and adoption is occurring in emerging markets in areas where people are using the blockchain as a form of financial inclusion. And I think DeFi uh, at its original purpose is really meant as an instrument for financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's huge demand. A as a result, we're in the process of building a bridge to MakerDAI. We expect mm -hmm. that to be completed in the coming weeks. 
uh, and we've had initial conversations with other large DeFi projects like Compound. Uh, about two weeks ago, we announced a partnership with uh, Phantom, which is an Asia-based DeFi product, mm -hmm. and Binance, where ETC is used as collateral for that DeFi project. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, you know, it, it, some people look at DeFi as a, a speculative financial instrument, uh, and I suppose it could be used that way. We really see it as a tool for financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. Yes, financial inclusion is helping adoption in a lot of the emerging economies. Um, but for I the traditional in American financial markets, Ethereum has been a large use case, um, especially introducing more investment vehicles like you know staking, lending, margining, all these different kinds of trade in the cryptocurrency markets. Do you see traditional investors and, and venture capitalists and, and the financial markets being attracted to the Ethereum Classic blockchain as it continues to grow out and could it be used efficiently in that industry? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think first off, we've seen enormous interest from the investor community in Ethereum Classic as probably the single best value investment in crypto. Uh, you have all the functionality of Ethereum and a fraction of the price. Uh, at the same time, you have Ethereum moving to a new consensus algorithm, proof of stake, whereas Ethereum Classic will remain proof of work. Uh, and so from an investor point of view, I think they see a lot of potential upside. The other thing that we expect in 2020 is to see CFTC approved futures contracts for both Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, um, which will bring a lot of regulated uh liquidity into the market the secondary market for trading wow <laughs> that's great and as you said you're expanding your team um as you move towards that are you also looking for more um, startups potentially to join the ethereum classic labs or more strategic partners of some sorts always uh we're interested in ideas you know as early as written on a napkin um you know, we're, we're very opportunistic and, and opportunistic and open-minded when it comes to what developers and entrepreneurs are trying to build. Mm -hmm. That's great. And how can uh, those partners or startups find out more information about Digital Finance Group and ETC Labs? Uh, you can check out our website, etclabs.org. Uh, you can send me an email, terryc at etclabs.org. Um, and we'd be happy to talk to you. Amazing. I'll leave those links in the description box below as well, Terry. Thank you so much for your time in the interview. That's all the time that we do have today. But I appreciate you coming on and speaking about these new updates for Ethereum Classic Labs. And I'm all excited to follow up in the near future to the growth of the project. My pleasure. Thanks, Ashton.